Welcome back to Gold Seek TV. I'm here today with a very exciting exploration opportunity in Mexico and Arizona, a company which I am an investor in, one which has a very low market cap, uh, just over 10 million Canadian or 10 million under 10 million US with excellent share structure and excellent team involved. And uh, the company has uh, three very interesting projects all being worked on and, and moving forward. So I'd like to have uh, this opportunity to, to talk about these uh, different projects in the company with two individuals from the company. So with that, I'd like to uh, thank Dr. Craig Gibson and Alan Frame uh, with the company to join us today and talk more about Prismo Metals. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, thanks for inviting us. Uh, uh, I'll start it off. Uh, my name is Alan Frame, and I'm the, the Director of Business Development. I've uh, spent 47 years uh, in the investment industry underwriting junior resource companies. I retired a year ago. Before I retired, I did the IPO for Dr. Gibson and McGough for Prismo Metals. And uh, went just shortly after I retired, they asked me to join their team. So I was very thankful for the opportunity to work with uh, a group that has that much knowledge and experience and, and had very exciting projects. So if we carry through to the next slide, I'll give you the overview of the uh, company. And uh, Dr. Gibson will tell you more about the properties themselves and why we're excited for 2023. Fantastic. So firstly, uh, Dr. Gibson, Raphael Giardo and Dr. McGaugh are very well known. The, in the three of them alone, have over 100 years of exploration experience in Mexico alone. So uh, that's pretty impressive right off the top. This company has no salaries, uh, no fixed overheads uh, at all. They just pay in hard dollars for whatever their expenditures are. Most of the money goes right into the ground through the drill bit. They have $5 million in cash and marketable securities. So they're in an enviable posi position where they uh, will need no funding until late in 2024. The three projects we have at present are fully funded and uh, we have room to expand those as well financially. We are diversified geographically. Uh, two of our properties, our lead properties are in Mexico and we recently acquired one in Arizona. And we're also uh, diversified in that we're precious metals in Mexico and base metals, i.e. copper in, uh, in Arizona. So of our three major projects, the first one, Palos Verdes, came from Dr. Gibson on a vend-in as the company was originally formed. So he earned his shares in his position as a founder by, by vending in Palos Verdes. Palos Verdes, by the way, came into the company before Visma Silver became the land baron in the area. And uh, as most people know, Visma has been extremely successful, wonderful company good explorers. They've got, you know, an awful lot of silver that they've already discovered. They have a $430 million market cap. So when they first started, they had an original strike length of about 400 meters and they got quite excited about that for all the good reasons, really high grade. So our property, Palos Verdes, is considerably smaller than theirs. But to put it in context, we have a strike length that's about 750 meters. So you don't have to be a giant, you know, to find some good resources and reserves. So we're pretty excited about Palos Verdes. We're uh, locked and loaded and we expect to be drilling this week. Uh, and Dr. Gibson will tell you more about that. Las Pavitos is kind of the opposite of Palos Verdes in that it's a very large property. We like to think of it as a, an area play. And once again, Dr. Gibson will elaborate on that. We've done a lot of work there. We're getting ready to drill. We expect we'll be drilling perhaps by the end of June. And we've had all kinds of exciting uh, assays from surface sampling, then a LIDAR survey and a few things like that. So we've lit it up pretty good. We're excited about drilling that one. And then the uh, third property, which we recently picked up in Arizona, initially for us had a great address, you know, where all the big boys live. So we're right in the middle of all of that. We're surrounded by past producers, present producers, and future producers. Great geological setting. We're uh, quite excited about that property. We're doing work on the surface already, and optimistically, we'll be drilling that one in the in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. So, if we can go on to the uh, the next slide, please. 
Yeah, the, this is another thing. You know, as a broker, when you're doing these deals, you look at three things. The people, number one, because they'll they'll make or break you. Secondly, you know, you need to have a good share structure because these new companies need to build. So if you start with a bad one, you're going to end with a worse one. So, mm-hmm. you know, we, we tick, tick, be fit to build there, too. And then thirdly, some properties, which I've just briefly touched on. But this company here has about 50 million shares out. The management and founders own about 29, almost 30%, which is awesome. Yeah. And uh, the Vizla became interested in our property because of, you know, the, the location. They're on three sides of us. So we entered into talks with them last year. They decided that they liked the company and that it might become accretive to their position over time. So they did a private placement for us. That's where that 10% comes from. They, we received five hundred thousand dollars cash and a million shares of these, which we're pretty excited about. You know, we've got a one stock portfolio, but it's a good one, mm-hmm. so we're very happy with that. We also have a joint committee with them mm-hmm. to uh, work on on the uh, Palace Fair Days, and uh, that's turning out to be quite well. And Dr. Gibson will talk more about what we're going to do there. So when they got involved, the next thing we knew, we we were called by several of their main institutions. And they thought, well, if, you know, these was investing in us, they'd like to do the same. And they did. So we took another $3 million in cash from them. And that gives them that almost 15% interest. So the remaining shares, about 46%, are held by different investors. Non-institutional, that's nearly all retail. And of that, probably 60 or 70% are pretty friendly retail shareholders that were part of the IPO and part of each of these placements as we've gone along, the ones that they could participate in. So that's the share structure. Uh, as you said earlier, uh, there has a very low market cap or around around uh, 10 million bucks Canadian, 10, 11 million dollars. So when we get to drilling and, and get uh, busy in the field, if we have success through the drill bit, I think this company will represent a lot of market torque. You know, it's uh, it's ready to go right now. We're all we're locked and loaded, as I said, and drilling will commence within a few days. So those are you know, the three main things from my perspective. The people mm-hmm. plays in the structure, and uh, the properties themselves are are really interesting and exciting. And Dr. Gibson will be happy to tell you about them. Okay, great. Could I ask you one question there with Vizsla, with Vizsla's Silver's investment? That was done in January of this year. I believe that closed. That was uh, when the company was valued near more closely to $20 million, or the share price was that at 50 cents a share, their interest? Yes. So, yes. Yes, Yes. it was. And the institutional one, I think, was 52. They were right around the same, and they were done right around the same time as well. Okay. So we were, number one, we were really happy to uh, find ourselves on their radar screen. You know, it gives us a potential opportunity. And now what this visa got out of that, I'm glad you brought that up because I failed to mention that they wanted a rofer, a right of first refusal on Palos Verdes. So as our drilling continues, if we're successful, there's uh, some chance of uh, some future monetization of that project between ourselves and Visma. Mm-hmm. So we're working together as a team. We're excited about it. They're excited about it. And if it works out, uh, that it works well. It's unlikely you'd see two mines in that area. You know, so uh, it, it's, a, it's a future potential monetization, which... I just happened to, and I I was at the Vancouver uh, J- Cambridge House show in, in January here, and the uh, CEO of Isla Silver had a presentation, and, and in that presentation he mentions we can get more into this uh, in, in the actual project slides, but the uh, vein going from their property goes into your property and then exits back into their property. So this this is quite a interesting. It, it may not be a a, a huge land package like they have, but it's a very strategic position and very interesting uh, uh, part of the pro- of this whole region that they're looking to really secure this district, which they are, are really aggressive in, in uh, trying to secure for themselves. Yes, you're you're right. I mean, we only had access to thirty five percent of our property, so that's you know that was the only area we could drill. But we've got several uh, several holes we drilled that were over 2,000 grams of silver as well. So, you know, there's some real synergies, and they kind of, they're at the bottom, they're at the right, they're at the top. <laughs> they're, they're surrounding us. So 
Uh, to say that we're optimistic uh, about Palos Verdes is an understatement. I mean, it will be proved through the drill bit, but we're pretty excited about it all. Okay, and one other thing that he mentioned in that presentation is that he wasn't just interested in, in, in this, uh, I mean, this is a very interesting project for them, but he was actually interested in the entire company and your other projects as well. So they they're, 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 they seem to be very strong supporters of the company uh, in, in more than just one way, which uh, is I, I found to be quite interesting. So that's, that's it's a very supportive uh, strategic investor you have there. Oh, I agree. We're we're absolutely thrilled and, and pleased almost beyond words that uh, that we're working together because, the, I mean, they're, they've set the stage there in this area, in the Panuka district, for sure. And and the potentials for us, I mean, right now, they, we have 100 years experience while well, they're tapping it too. So, you know, that's a two-way street, our knowledge and their knowledge together. I don't think for a moment that uh, that they don't like the, the Las Fadidos property. When we did the deal, we didn't have the Arizona property, you know, and that's a bit of a horse of a different color in that it's not precious metals, but it's pretty exciting too. Mm -hmm. And who knows, that may yield some precious metals as well. But I think our both our plays in Mexico are very appealing to them. And certainly uh, Michael and the people from Vizla have been our best supporters. And we're, as I said earlier, we're very thankful to have this association with them. Fantastic. That's very interesting. Okay. So the catalyst for this year here, this uh, slide here shows uh, the busy year ahead that you, you have planned uh, after quite a bit of early activity in the first quarter. So uh, if we can go over this slide, I think this is quite interesting to see how this year looks for the company. Yeah, this is uh, just an outline of, of what we're going to be doing in, in this quarter, second quarter, and then going on to the third and fourth quarter this year. And, uh, you know, the, each of these line items is you know we'll have a news you know one or multiple news releases associated with them and we'll be uh doing work on all the projects throughout the year they'll have pretty continuous news flow i think and uh, i'm not going to go through this in detail we'll kind of mention that on on the slides for each uh, project but uh, you can look at this for a bit and kind of see see how things are going to work out for the year pretty active year for us Lots of news flow, lots of, lots of work being done. Fantastic. Let me go right into some of the uh, project descriptions, and I'll start off with Palos Verdes. It's uh, you know it's our most advanced project. Again, we're uh, in the uh, Panuco district along with Vista Silver. It's located about 50 kilometers northeast of Mazatlan, right on the the main highway to Durango. So good infrastructure power and everything like that, a good mining uh, jurisdiction, a lot of past mining in there in the, uh, historically. And this is a slide that shows the land position, uh, Vistla Silver's land position in light blue, and our Palos Verdes concession, much smaller as Al says, in the magenta color. I think the, the most interesting thing here is, you know, we had the Palos Verdes project before Vistla came into the district. and. They picked up two large uh, packages to consolidate the district. And at that time, they surrounded us on three sides. And I think the other main main feature is, you know, uh, Vistla came into the district in roughly 2019, started drilling mainly down in the southwestern portion of the district. And they've been very successful for such a short time. They've got uh, roughly 200 million ounce silver equivalent resource in just those three years, mainly on two veins. So uh, I think that's one of the reasons they're inter they're interested in in uh, Palos Verdes. They're looking for their next uh, large resource, large vein, and uh, we have one that may foot the bill. So uh, they're you know, they've been watching us pretty closely, and then we did the strategic uh, investment at the end of last year and closing it in January. Uh, this this slide shows the land position. It's in inside the yellow line is the Palos Verdes concession, and as as you mentioned, Peter, the uh, the Palos Verdes vein here begins on a Vista Silver concession, runs through our property for 750 meters, and then runs off onto another Vista Silver concession, and also dips towards Vista Silver's uh, one of their concessions. So uh, they're surround us on three sides and uh, interested, of course, in in what's going on there because uh, these orange dots here are, are drill holes that we've already completed 
with pretty good results overall. Uh, the uh, the access for our environmental permit at the time would only allow us to drill in this area and down here in the corner. So that's only about 35% of the strike length of the vein. Uh, this vein again with 750 meter strike length is, is of a sufficient size to even be of interest to, to Visla with their 200 million ounce silver equivalent resource. So this could be large enough to to make a difference for them. So uh, we have to finish exploring. And uh, as Al said, we'll be starting a drill program in a, in a few days. Uh, that'll be focusing on this portion of the vein to the nor northeast, which has had no drilling on it so far, and a little small gap down in here between areas that we've drilled. So the, the drill program is planned for 2,500 meters. Again, it'll be commencing this week and uh, you know we'll have uh, probably assay results sometime near the end of the month in early June. So we'll start having news flow uh, pretty quickly on this. And when when you did the prior drilling on the prior programs, they were more shallow in nature. Is that the case? And will that be the case going forward for this drill program? Well, the initial drilling was shallow, and we drilled some deeper holes. But again, just on these uh, three areas, we could get to. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and, uh, we'll focus on this next program, starting off with shallow holes because that's uh, that makes sense when you're starting off on a vein. You want to make sure you have the the orientation of the vein all fixed before you drill a deeper hole. So mm -hmm. we'll drill some shallow holes up here and then move back and drill deeper holes. S and uh, same down here. It's actually our original plan was to drill from a road to build a road up here, but now with the associated association with Fisla we can drill from their concession, a road that already exists, and we'll have a much better angle at the drilling. Some of the deeper holes uh, we're, we're kind of up too close to drill a steep hole into a steep structure, and this will allow us to step back and drill a shallower hole through that steep structure. It will give us a best, better idea of the thickness and make sure we're, we're getting through the entire structure. The entire structure. and. Uh, the access now to the property, it has, it looks like it's been granted for the other drilling that, that was something that's been in yeah. development for a while. So it was about two thirds, 65, 70% of the property that you didn't have access to prior. Right. No, no drilling access. You know, we could get on the surface, but, uh, we didn't have a drill permit and, uh, we didn't have a permit to construct new sites so that we received that earlier this year and, uh, are actively uh, putting those sites in and uh, the you know, drill will be on site uh, probably tomorrow or the next day and begin drilling, you know, sometime later in the week. Very nice. So it's a very, this is a culmination of past work, the strategic, uh, um, not interest, but also work. And now with Vishal, you guys are working very closely together on both sides. That's, it's, uh, this is a, a good partnership I can see. And uh, now that you're going to be working on these this, these other areas, this, uh, the results, I guess, they'll be coming on the, in the what about a two two three month uh, period from now, or how long? Well, yeah, it'll take a couple months to finish the program. It's not that larger program, but uh, yeah, you know, we depending on uh, how things go, I think we could have some initial results, uh, you know, probably mid June, something like that, and then trailing on from there. Uh, we'll see how it goes there, but that's that's the plan right now. We use a lab in Durango, uh, just up the road from here, from the property, and uh, they do their assay work in Mexico. Mm -hmm. So it's much quicker turnaround than some of the Vancouver labs. Yes. So yeah. we can get turnarounds, you know, less than two weeks commonly. Wow, that's fantastic. Uh, uh, so that that will then help uh, with those results. Will help guide you then on the next phase of of exploration development work on the project. Yeah, that's correct. Excellent. Um, so that, that's going to be a busy coming months here on, on this project. Uh, if we go over to, uh, this next project, Los Pavitos. So this one is, you're looking for a big multi-million ounce gold deposit on this project. That would be the, the goal here. Uh, this, right. this kind of elephant size kind of deposit kind of hunting you, you have. Um, so if you, yeah, give us more insight into this project. It's a different kind of a project. Again, like Al said, it's it's district scale, 5,300 hectares, and it covers all the mineralization around this, uh, the known mineralization in the area. It's similar in some cases because it's a favorable mining jurisdiction near Alamos, 
in southern Sonora. So it's had a long history of mining in the region uh, up till current times. Uh, there's a copper mine in production right now, uh, exploration going on around here. And, uh, you know, it was early stage when we first vended it into, uh, uh, when, you know, Dr. Peter McGaugh's company vended it into the cup to uh, Prismo Metals, the very early stage, a uh, few uh, recon samples taken. But uh, starting last year, we worked on this project uh, to map and sample it in a, uh, in a recon sense or a target definition sense, uh, basically taking widely spaced samples, identifying areas to do more work in. And this is the map that was generated that we've We've got uh, several target areas, including Santa Cruz, Las Aures. Uh, these work, these areas have had uh, more detailed work done earlier this year. Uh, right now, we're continuing to work on on this area, Oromuri, bringing all these different uh, known areas up to basically a drill ready stage. So uh, mm -hmm. we've got several of them at that point. Uh, we found this area down in the southeastern corner, which is a little bit different. It's stock works and disseminated pyrite and uh, rhyolitic intrusives with some veining down there, but uh, similar mineralization across the property. And as, as I said, you know, we're, we're developing these to, to, to be able to drill probably sometime in June. Uh, we recently received an environmental permit, which will allow us to do some trenching. And uh, I'll mention that in this next one. These are some sample results we put out about a month ago on the Santa Cruz area, uh, typical veins here, they're relatively narrow veins, you know, half meter to a meter width, but high grade of uh, all these purples samples are over three grams per ton and ranging up to over 20 grams per ton. So uh, high grade, narrow quartz veins, we've got several veins that have been uh, sampled here. But the uh, the key here is the, the samples are all taken on resistant quartz veins that are sticking up out of the ground. And between those, we don't really have much uh, outcrop. Uh, we can't really sample much. So uh, our environmental permit was focused on being able to build trenches across these structures so we can sample the, the rock uh, around the higher grade veins and between them. And with the goal of trying to find a, a wider structural zone with uh, narrow or uh, with higher, uh, lower grades, let's say lower grade wider structural zone mm. rather than just the high grade veins. And there's an example of our environmental permit. Uh, the uh, blue lines are trenches that were permitted across the main structural trends. And the uh, green dots are, are uh, drill sites that are permitted. We have about 30 of those across the property. So uh, right now we're doing all the work to uh, begin a drill program probably in late June of this year. Fantastic. So as, as the other, as a uh, constant use flow from the other project and this one coming right after. So this is, there's a right. lot of potential to, uh, for shareholder value being through discovery here. Um, fantastic. And I think one of the main uh, important features of this project is it's, you know, it's in Sonora down here in Southern Sonora, but it's uh, Sonora has a, uh, developing gold province in, in Northwest Mexico called the Caborco or, or Northwest Sonora Gold Belt extends from Southern California where the Mesquite mine into central Sonora state. Uh, there's numerous uh, large gold deposits along it uh, of a proposed uh, orogenic uh, type of deposit, which uh, basically there's generally high grade veins that can extend to great depth uh, but also in this case, you can find uh, wider zones near the surface that can be exploited by open pit mining. So mm -hmm. almost all of these, I think all of these were open pit mines originally. Uh, the province is probably host to about 30 to 40 million ounces of gold between past production and resources in, in various categories in all these different mines. Uh, the largest one, La Herradura, has, has produced 5 million ounces of gold on that order and probably has resources of 10 to 15 million ounces uh, in a large open pit. I believe they're now going underground on that to mine uh, high-grade vein. And uh, we we feel that uh, based on the geology that we have at, uh, at Los Pavitos, that we may have extended this belt 
to southern Sonora. It goes undercover in central part of the state, and we think we may have a piece of that same rock down to the uh, south. So uh, that's based on the type of rock, the structure of the rock, also the types of veins and the geochemistry of those veins are, are suggested that that we have something that is different than your the normal uh, epithermal veins that the Alamos region is is known for. So, mm-hmm. uh, what the work we've done so far seems to to agree with that, and uh, you know we're really excited to be able to drill it and and get some uh, get some real uh, assay results if you want from from the subsurface. Oh, excellent! That's very interesting. So. That uh, that program that you're looking to do, the drill program, starting in, in mid late June, uh, what what kind of uh, size program would that be? Well, we've planned it at a start as 2,500 meters. Also, uh, these would be in shallow holes. We go back here. Oops, go there the wrong way. There'll be shallow holes along the structural zone to start again to make sure we have the orientation of those zones correct and everything is uh, good. For dealing deeper holes, and that's it's always wise to start off with shallow drilling. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I think with 2,500 meters, we could do, uh, you know, several several holes in each of the structural zones, and then uh, we'll probably, you know, with success, we'll continue to uh, drill, and probably end up with about 5,000 meters by the end of the year. But uh, mm-hmm. probably take a break in the heat of the summer, and after do the initial program, and then continue on after summer. Okay, the second phase program. Okay, excellent. So I think it's time to to look at uh, copper opportunities in in Arizona, which, uh, boy, you have a great real estate in in one of the main copper uh, regions in the world here. Uh, So if we can learn more about this recent addition to the company. And uh, if you could also give us a little bit more details, this is a... A com- it's a, a, a recently added, uh, I guess, ag- agreement you have to um, earn up to 75% of the project interest. Is that correct? Yes. The, the interesting uh, how this came about, we we did our financing, uh, you know, the strategic investment with Visla, and then their uh, institutional shareholders came in and invested in, in the company. So, uh, you know, we had uh, funds. Uh, we decided we were going to diversify a little bit out of Mexico, and uh, you know, mainly precious metals, but we decided we would look at copper also. And, and very quickly, we, we identified this uh, the Hop Retro property. And that's uh, based on some uh, relationships we have with, uh, with well, like Peter McGaugh is, uh, knows about this property. And uh, these Infinitum Copper is uh, associated with, with, with Peter's group. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, we knew some of the people with... Uh, main investors in Finitum Copper, and it, it turned out to be a good time as they, uh, it was, uh, end of the last year, hard to finance, and, mm-hmm. uh, they were, they have their flagship property actually near our Los Pavitos project. So this one, uh, you know, they had some commitments to make on it, uh, and, uh, and they couldn't make those basically, and we, we stepped in, took over uh, part of the, uh, the original deal they had with the landowner. With the concession holder and uh, you know, agreed to take over seventy five percent, and they they uh, Infinitum Copper is still still uh, going to retain twenty five percent, and uh, mm-hmm. they will meet part of the commitments also. So okay. it worked out pretty well. They they had a good deal on the property, and we basically didn't have to pay up for it. We took over the deal and uh, not onerous payments, uh, reasonable payments, and property payments, and reasonable work commitment for for the project. So. I think it was a win-win situation. It's mm-hmm. again the projects in southern Arizona, you know, a world-class mining region. It's surrounded by, as Al said, uh, very large past producers, uh, current producers, and then some future producers that are coming online, hopefully in the next couple of years. So, some of the largest copper mines in the world are right around this project. And another interesting feature is, you know, it's near a Past producing high grade copper mine, the Christmas mine here, are the uh, hot pressure land package is about 1500 hect- hectares here in yellow, and it's about five kilometers south of the Christmas mine, which again was a, uh, it was a high grade producer from Scarns. I think they're about one and a half to three percent copper. Wow. Uh, produced 360 million pounds of copper in the past. So it's a, uh, you know, a high grade producer right next door. 
uh, Freeport since since the mine was shut down has drilled off what they call it, an inventory or mineralized material of about 1.7 billion pounds of copper with significant precious metals around the Christmas mine. So uh, it's a large uh, low grade deposit around the high grade uh, mined portion of the deposit. And I'll go through a little bit of that. It's actually pretty interesting. You see this, this schematic section through the Christmas mine. The, the mine itself was high grade. Again, scarns at the contact of intrusions with favorable carbonate rocks from the Paleozoic sequence in Arizona, uh, mined in, in uh, open pit and, and stopes, shallow stopes. And again, high grade scar and mineralization. And around that in the stippled pattern is the, the uh, volume of mineralized rock defined by by Freeport after this was mined, all this rock in here. And on this side, you have the these uh, red colored intrusions coming up through the favorable carbonate sequence. But on this side of the project, it, those rocks were overlain by volcanics, which are, are pre-mineral. They're intruded by the uh, by these red intrusions and also mineralized. So uh, you got a large low grade halo and some high grade uh, scar mineralization at depth, and it's basically the eastern half of this, or right half of this figure, is our model for hot breccia. Okay. Uh, have the same situation, intrusions coming up through the, the sedimentary rocks into overlying volcanics, and uh, all this is mineralized, and we know that because uh, there's been some drilling on the project in the past. Uh, Bear Creek, which is a Kennecott subsidiary, drilled seven holes on the project in the 70s and very early 80s shown here. So they, uh, we've got some of the information from those holes. We know they hit mineral station at depth. And I'll go just to this next slide. It's looking at this from underneath. The land position is in purple, the hot pressure land position. And you can see these holes that Kennecott drilled coming through the surface to depth. And we don't have all the data for those drill holes. We have some of the data from high up in the holes showing lower grade mineralization uh, in the volcanic rocks. And then we have some information, not complete, showing they had high grade mineralization at depth below that volcanic uh, limestone contact. So uh, their best hole, I think, was about uh, 60 feet of 1.4% copper and 4% zinc. And then they had another one with 25 feet of 1.7% copper with a little bit of zinc. So we know they had the high grade scar mineralization at depth. And, uh, you know, right now we're advancing this project through surface mapping. Uh, we're just about to start a, a permitting process to, to get, uh, permits ready for drilling later in the year. We think we'll have all that underway later this month and probably permits hopefully in hand sometime in, in June. And we just signed a contract for a, a airborne geophysical survey over the project. And this will be a, uh, a CTEM survey that will look for uh, sulfide bodies, conductive sulfide bodies at depth, looks up to a kilometer deep through the volcanics. So uh, we hope to have that done also in the same time frame uh, later this month or in June. That will be flown and we'll have that data. Excellent. That's uh jumping right into the into this project right after doing this deal with them so this is uh really uh looking interesting and something that you want to move ahead forward pretty quickly here yeah this is uh you know it's it, it's ready to go pretty much it's uh you know just doing uh, more let's say more modern geophysical work on it and our plan is to get it ready to drill probably drill at least one hole you know these are deeper holes these uh these Purple intercepts are at uh, 2,300 feet to 2,700 feet depth. So mm -hmm. basically, the holes will be about a thousand meter holes, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll probably try to do one right near the end of the year. Uh, it could be a twin of one of these, or if we have some compelling, uh, you know, anomaly from the geophysics indicating a you know a conductive sulfide body at depth, we may put a hole into that first, but. Uh, you know, we'll probably drill the one hole and and then uh, you know continue drilling into next year. Uh, the plan right now is to do two to two to five holes, 
So that's, uh, you know, up to 5,000 meters on this between late this year and into, into next year. Excellent. Very interesting. So a lot of activity going on there. Uh, this is a, just an example of the, the namesake breaches for the property of different kinds of breaches with the, they're, they're polylithic with, uh, fragments of volcanic wall rock, various intrusive phases. Uh, there's, they're associated with zones of, of copper mineralization. And some of these have margins that have, uh, iron oxides and with a little bit of gold in them. So there's, there's mineralization all the way up to the surface. And, uh, and it's shown in this one, an important feature. You have, uh, fragments of, of these sedimentary rocks coming up from, you know, 400 to 700 meters depth brought up by these dikes. So a lot of vertical activity. Uh, we know the, the, the rocks, uh, the mineralized rocks are at depth or underneath this. So, you know, we were on the property a short time ago with investors and, uh, Peter, Peter McGaugh looked at this and he, he said he thought, you know, you, we had all the, the right the features that you need, uh, for a, uh, for a good deposit. So we just need to do the work to, to show that. Excellent. Wow. That's lots of great prospects and being diversified into Arizona and also into copper with the uh, potential to have precious metals, uh, involved with this as well. What, what are you, uh, how do you see that coming into play? Some kind of similar uh, geology than as you're saying as the Christmas mine uh, where you have the precious metals values kind of around kind of a higher grade copper deposit or? Yeah, it's mainly a copper mine, but it, you know, there's, there's gold and silver and also lead and zinc mixed in with the copper okay. mineralization. So uh, you know, this is an example of the terrain there, what you see in the background, the Hayden smelter, you know, there's a smelter, that's right now it's not, it's shut down. It's a Sarco smelter. Uh, it's just a, you know, a few kilometers, 10, 15 kilometers from the property. So mm -hmm. very important mining region. You know, this, this, uh, was producing for decades and, uh, the, the ray mine up the road from here has been producing for 50 to 70 years. Wow. So that's, uh, you know, a large copper deposit, uh, originally was used to smelter and now they're leaching, uh, you know, leachable copper. So so it's, uh, you know, it's a very important mining region and you know, we think we'll have some precious metals associated with this, but it'll, it'll be dominantly a copper, a copper play, we think. Mm -hmm. And the work commitment schedule for this goes over, extends until 2027, 2028 to get the 75% interest. Is that? Yeah. And, you know, uh, basically we've already pretty much completed our work commitment for this year, close to it. Okay. And, uh, you know, the drilling we're planning will, I'll probably complete next year's pretty quickly. Like I said, the mm -hmm. the work commitments are are not onerous. They're they're what you need to advance the project in each each stage you get to. So, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, just the amount of work we're doing is is what you need to do on a project to advance it, uh, and you know, at a reasonable rate. And it's you don't have to do more than we would do anyway. So let's put it that way. It's a pretty good pretty good deal overall. Well structured. Fantastic. Um, anything else we want to add to this, uh, these, this, this project? Yeah, I just want to go back to this slide briefly. That one we started off with, uh, just talked about all this, you know, very quickly going through the projects and, you know, there's a line item for most of those, those features here. And, uh, you know, we'll be working on these projects throughout the year, drilling all three of them this year. And again, uh, we're fully funded to do that work. So, uh, it's looking like a pretty good year. It is. I, I, uh, I can't say enough as far as investing into a junior exploration company. Not only do you have one interesting prop property, but you have three. You're well financed. You have an excellent technical team and management team involved. An excellent share structure. Your your investors, yourself, you're invested into the company. So your 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 success is going to come from the. With, along with the shareholders uh, being you know, rewarded if, if uh, you can create value through the discovery. So I, I love the fact that the share price has come back from uh, an investor like myself who was just being introduced to this recently. So uh, I, I love the opportunity to be able to get into this company uh, just months after Vishla's uh, paid almost, more, not quite double, but uh, you know, close to that right now. So 
from a new investor perspective, this looks very inexpensive. You're well financed and ready to to proceed with these projects and move forward through this year into next year. So, I, I don't see uh, a lot of downside in the near future with with a lot of useful and potential for upside if if you do really discover and hit some r- really good results off any of these projects. So I I have a hard time understanding why the market is uh, really discounting you this much right now. Well, I think, you know, last year we had a, you know, a pretty good year. We were, uh, we had good share price appreciation uh, after we were started drilling at Palos Verdes. We were pretty good about putting news out, keeping people informed. You know, and the, the stock went up, the, the price went up pretty pretty significantly. And we were able to do that, that financing, you know, right at the end of the year. And, you know, since then we've kind of been uh, waiting for some from uh, environmental permits on, on the two Mexico projects. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, keeping a, a low profile, and that—that's part of the reason the the share price probably backed off a bit. But you know, we think with activity, we've got both of those environmental permits in hand now. With the activity, you know, starting to drill at at uh, Palos Verdes this week, and advancing uh, Los Pavitos for drilling in a in a month or a month and a half, I think you know we'll see some activity, and hopefully that share price will move up again. Yes, nicely. We're de risk now, and. Uh the general sector that itself has been kind of left behind but now we have the precious metals market really reviving gold is just just inches below all-time record highs silver is is coming back alive copper has very interesting prospects for in in the coming years uh i mean it just uh i i think timing is 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 just excellent so I, i i really uh uh, I like this opportunity a lot. I continue to build a share position in the company, and uh, I think this is going to be quite exciting coming month uh, months ahead, uh, quarters uh, as as the results come out and on three different projects. So this is this this looks really good to me. Um, is there uh, anything that uh, w- would you like uh, anything else uh, to add add to the story, Alan, or? Anything else that we No, missed? from uh, my perspective, uh, I mean, it's great to be working with the A-team. You know, we're about to start up in the field again in terms of drilling. Investors like drilling. You know, that's what drives stock prices. You know, we've got three awesome projects. We've got the cash for them all. We've got the expertise. We'll try to establish and create additional value through the drill bit this year and give investors every opportunity to see and uh, feel stock price appreciation. So... We're very excited and we're uh, happy for all of our shareholders. We're we're going to give it all we've got this year to enhance our positions. Fantastic. Well, I'm excited to be a shareholder and a continued accumulated position and uh, really looking forward to the, the coming quarters of the, with all the, the news and drill results coming out. So I'm going to uh, hope uh, to get you back on, on the show in the coming months as we start to get more results coming out so we can talk and take a look and see how they look like and, and get a better idea of what we're looking at and uh, get an update to where, where, where things are at. So I really appreciate your time and coming on today and giving us a nice overview of the company and um, and yeah, giving us uh, yeah some, some a lot of exciting things to look forward to as, as investors in the coming year. Yeah, thank you very much, Peter. We'll be glad to be on later this year, no problem. Great. And for investors yeah. who would like some more information... Um, it, it, the, the website is prismametals.com and you trade on the CSU. You also have a OTC QX listing. Right. It's PMOMF. Fantastic. Great. Well, thank you again for your time and look forward to connecting with you in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you.